Hey guys, well we're just out with the snow machine and the sleigh and uh, chainsaw. Got a top of a poplar that fell down. So we're gonna get uh, the branches cleaned up. I'll leave the poplar for uh, another, another time off and then I'll cut it down and uh, probably just bring it out to the shack. But uh, some wolf or coyote tracks um, come from the neighbor's property at the back, basically it comes through, heads uh, straight on down the trail to where the food plots are, crossed in through the food plot. Um, and obviously if uh, we wouldn't have got this snow, I would have had some good pictures of it because right on the lens, there's a big glob of ice and snow and uh, no pictures, but I know that uh, those would have been wolf or coyote pictures because the tracks are from first thing this morning because there's no snow on them and they're nice and sharp and crisp and uh, I got some trail cam pictures during the day so um, no doubt that it was him or her but that's the way it goes. I've also got some uh, one by material right here that I want to cut. I got a uh, project and uh, I'll explain that later. Got a bit of uh, some channel news, some good channel news. So I'll share that after, but I'm gonna get this cut, moved out of the way. I'm gonna try and load the, uh, the one by material in the back of my sleigh. Uh, it's longer than that, so I'm not sure what my best option's gonna be just yet. I did bring some ratchet straps, so I can hopefully uh, ratchet strap it down. Um, I'm probably gonna put them down in so that they come up. Uh, I've got two stacks, so I'll probably do it in three or four trips, we'll see. Um, I did thought, think about just laying them right across the top, but I don't have anywhere good to tie them to. I'd have to run the ratchet strap underneath them. Um, so, yeah, I don't have any good options. I probably could sneak the gator out here, but I don't have my chains and stuff. And uh, going down that hill, it's gonna be pretty rough. Um, and slippery. I've uh, slid into trees there before going down the hill. So uh, anywho, we're gonna put you down, get that tree cut up and moved, and then uh, figure out a game plan for those one buys. Well, we got the uh, trail cleared up pretty good. We got all that lumber out of there. There's, uh, that's my third trip. And I did six or seven pieces each, so let's uh, go with 15 pieces in total anyways, because this one's got five. I think I did five, seven, and five. Something like that, so not too bad. That's all wood I cut in a previous video. I'll link it at the end or in the, the description with my chainsaw mill. I had, uh, whew, sorry I'm out of breath, but I've been trying to uh, get this done. Um, was planning on maybe using it for uh, my siding on my shack but I've got to order a bit of siding for the back of my garage and I've got a couple boards on the house that are split so I'm gonna maybe order enough to do my shack it's cedar so uh, that'll really protect the outside but uh, beautiful out it's oh, it's got to be sitting around zero maybe a little bit colder because it's not really uh, dripping off the trees too much but um, that's the poplar right there, right where my head is, that the top broke off of. Didn't uh, clean it up totally. I'm just uh, putting my tripod on here. Didn't uh, clean it up totally because um, the grouse really like poplar tops as well as the rabbits. So you can see that I left a lot of this small stuff and I tried to throw it down so that uh, they can get at it and uh, eat it. Um, I bumped two grouse out of here first thing this morning yeah you can see their tracks in there there's tracks right down in there and then there's tracks all back in through there there was two of them it's uh it's good uh, for the wildlife um, when we have really harsh winters where there's either lots of snow or it's brutally cold I'll actually drop a poplar that's uh, kind of looking rough and uh, it's good so that the deer and animals can nip the tops. The deer will eat some of the bigger uh, branches and buds 
Uh, the grouse will eat the buds. The rabbits will chew off the nice uh, green part of the bark. So it's kind of a win-win. Um, this is actually right where the wolf or the coyote came. And uh, I showed you earlier the tracks. But that's where you come out of the bush. Right back in through there. When you, uh, when you have lots of deer and wildlife, you're going to have lots of predators. They kind of go hand in hand. Um, I just haven't had time to uh, do any good trapping out here. There's been a few set of fox around. The neighbor shot one uh, last week or the week before. So I got that. It's a nice looking uh, fox. There's another one around because I just got some pictures of him or her. Probably a her because the other one was a male, but um, so I really got to get out and start doing some uh, predator control. But uh, got lots on the plate right now. I'm just going to uh, have a little drink of my beer and I'll set the tripod up and we'll have a little chat about uh, some channel uh, news. Alrighty, so uh, some channel updates, some channel news. Uh, I've been a trapper now for this is maybe my fourth year. I think I got my license in December of 2015, so that would be three years. Um, tried to find a trap line of my own, um, haven't been successful, they're very hard to come by here in Ontario. There's uh, right around 2800 trap lines, registered trap lines, and uh, you need to apply for them. They go on a point system, so uh, it's kind of like a seniority basically. So the more you trap, the more clubs you're a member of, the more points you get, and the more points go towards um, your applying for a trap line. So being basically a rookie trapper, you have almost no chance of uh, getting a line unless you get on as a helper, or uh, you know someone that's looking to give up a line. Uh, it'd be like winning the lottery. So um, we have Canadian Trappers Chat. It's a forum where you can go on and uh, ask questions and talk to fellow trappers across Canada, the US and uh, outside of North America. Uh, pretty good base of trappers. There's uh, a lot of big shot trappers, like famous, famous people or semi-famous people, I guess, and uh, in the trapping community that are on this page, so it's pretty cool. But uh, they also have kind of like a wanted section and uh, you can put up, uh, you know, you want to buy a certain trap or you're looking for a snow machine, uh, whatever the case may be. So uh, I think it was my first year trapping. I, uh, I put an ad up looking for, you know, become a, a helper or even my own line in the North Bay area. I had uh, zero luck. Um, last year I didn't because I just got busy with work and, um, you know, just didn't get around to it. Did a little bit of trapping, but nothing too crazy. And uh, then this year, I uh, decided to to go back on that trappers chat and uh, just put a, a post up saying, "Hey man, I'm I'm looking to become a helper. If there's anybody in need of help on their trap line, uh, send me a message, and uh, we'll go from there." So it was probably a week or so. I never heard anything, and I thought, well, you know, I'm working up north. Maybe there's someone further up north that's looking for a hand. And since basically I'm spending half my year up there. You know, if it's uh, convenient and close, I could probably check traps after work. And uh, sure enough, a guy from Hamilton um, was gracious enough to give me an opportunity as a helper on his line. Um, the line's around the town of Larder Lake, and I'm working in Kirkland Lake, so it's kind of uh, perfect because Larder Lake's not that far. Um, if you can hear kind of a whistling sound, that's the skidoo, so I apologize for that that sound <clears throat> hopefully it's not too annoying and I'm talking over it but uh, yeah so the lines up there um, he lives down in Hamilton and uh, he comes up it sounds like spring and fall and uh, to do or fall and spring I guess to mainly do his beavers so we're kind of looking at doing a kind of a joint venture of uh, going after some Martin and Lynx so that's what the uh, one by material is for. That spruce that I cut uh, from two trees actually uh, well, 100 feet back that fell across my trail during a windstorm. 
and I milled them up. Like I said, I made that video, so you can check that out. But I thought I would utilize that, and make some uh, Martin boxes, some Fisher boxes. Um, gonna get try and get set up, try and uh, make as many as I can out of that material, and uh, maybe even buy some of those plastic ones that the guys have been pushing. Uh, maybe a dozen or so, just to uh, compare, try them out, um, check the costs, um, longevity, see how long they last in the bush. Are uh, animals busting them up really easy? Um, when a trap goes off, do they split when it's minus 30? Uh, that sort of stuff. So I'm pretty exciting. I'm pretty pumped about it. I've got all the toys to uh, go out and do it. It's really just uh, a matter of getting out and doing it. Uh, we're still going through the license uh, process, so he has to send in a letter to the ministry. They have to approve me, basically, and then it goes to the Ontario Fur Managers. And they uh, send me um, a letter. I think they send me a letter. If not, I have to send my application to them with my money. And uh, they print me up a license and send it over. And uh, then I'm good as a helper up there to trap. So I'm pretty pumped about that. Um, should open up a lot more opportunities. Should be a lot more videos. Uh, me trapping. Um, maybe skidooing in some different areas. Um, hopefully do a little ice fishing when I'm up there. Um, maybe a cabin build in a few years. There's no cabin. Um, he's got a camp that's a couple hours away. So he stays at his camp his first night and then stays in a hotel for a couple nights and then goes back to his camp. Uh, his camp's kind of like the home base for him. So um, it would be beneficial for me to have a camp there because um, then I'm not paying hotel fees when I'm working. Um, I get a living allowance, but then I could pocket that or put that towards a camp. So that's something I want to look into uh, in a couple years. Obviously not right now because it uh, is a little bit like winter out here. So, anywho guys, I appreciate uh, every, everyone tagging along and watching my videos. Uh, hopefully you guys are interested in some trapping videos in the near future. Um, I've got a video on making tapered Martin boxes. Uh, I think I'm just going to make uh, square boxes for the Savageos. Um, that's what he has. He's got a couple dozen Savageos. And uh, I'm considering picking some up. I've got some 160 Belial's and 330 Belial's. So um, some Savageos. I've got one Savageo that a friend I think stole off of someone's trap line a uh, long time ago and gave it to me. And it's got some pretty wicked uh, power. So I've been thinking about switching. But uh, this is my last load. I'm just going to uh, make sure I've got everything, that I didn't drop anything in the snow. And uh, head on back, stick this wood in the garage so that I can slowly uh, thaw out. It's been under a plastic tarp, so for the most part it's pretty dry. Uh, it'll be dry enough to build um, the Martin boxes. And uh, yeah, do some trapping. Looking forward to it guys, so uh, stay tuned and uh, appreciate your support.